Good morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. We'll start off today with an introduction of EAC, and then Paul Dye from PTC will be uh, presenting to us today on lightweighting parts with uh, topology optimization. Everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Please feel free to ask questions along the way and we'll answer them after the presentation. Um, we will have a short uh, survey that will appear once the webinar is over, so please just take a minute to answer those. Okay, so at EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. We're not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country. Um, we've got uh, experts in 22 areas of product development, and we are located all over the U.S. Uh, with our headquarters in Minneapolis. We offer our customers everything they need for product development, such as CreoCAD software for product design, service lifecycle management software for managing service documentation, and software that helps you manage your product data, such as uh, Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our customizable EAC productivity apps. Uh, we implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around uh, digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. We assist also with uh, design and engineering projects like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, and proof of concepts for our customers. Um, and then we also offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. Uh, we're also a commercial reseller for Form Labs. Um, we're offering the latest products in additive manufacturing. The Form 3 is now available um, with packages starting at $34.99. So please keep us in mind. We have solutions to help your organization save time and money throughout the product development process. Um, thanks for listening to who we are. I will hand things over to Paul so he can get started. Hey, thank you very much, Cassie. So again, my name is Paul Dye. I'm with the Virtual Center of Excellence with PTC. And today, my main goal is just to go over topology optimization with everybody. So let's get right into it. And before I really dive into everything, the first thing I want to do is just talk about some of the challenges that some of our other customers have voiced in the past, or maybe even some of the ones that you're seeing in your systems today. So CAD, and specifically CREA, can give you very good designs. So take what you're working with, maybe whatever loads you have, whatever you need to do, and you can build out a good part. And you could take that to the next step and run it through simulation to get an even better part. Move some things around, cut some holes, make rounds, and then run the simulation to make sure everything's still good. But what if you want the best possible part? So whatever your requirement is, least material, strongest part, how do you get there? That's what we work to solve here with Creo, and specifically through the use of topology optimization. Start with the basic part, whatever requirements might be, and just let the system build me out a manufacturable part that's optimized to exactly what I need in a way that I probably wouldn't have thought of on my own. This is an extension that we can utilize in Creo. It's gonna follow the same workflow and interface that we're used to, similar to what we'd be doing with Creo Parametric especially if you've used any simulation tools like Creo Simulate. It's going to start in the same way where we're laying out maybe some structural parameters such as applied loads and constraints. If you already have these laid out maybe over in a simulate study, you can simply re reuse those and bring them over into the optimization. And the difference here is now we're gonna go through and define some geometry information. And then we're gonna tell the system what areas might be excluded from the study and which spots that we want to optimize on. At the same time, we're defining the area that we want our topology optimization to be taking place in. We're also able to use things like fabrication constraints. So we can go through the study, and we know maybe the machining processes that we're going to use later on. With this function, we can lay out right in the study some of these shapes that we want to stay consistent, depending on the process that we're going to be using. So maybe I have castings, extrusions, 
We have radial constraints, mirrored, not mirrored, we keep everything symmetric. And not only building out the optimized part, but doing it with these fabrication constraints in mind. Once we have these all laid out, let's go and run through the study. And that's gonna be very fast. And we have a lot of information moving forward from that. We can see the results, taking into account what I told the system to optimize and maybe what not to change. We got some pretty complex geometry and it might be minimized for mass, anything that I laid out in my study. And here, this is something that only Creo has. So we can take that tessellated, non-usable geometry that we got from the study and convert it into manufacturable geometry. You might have other systems that could build out those simulated bodies, but those are really just guides for the user to follow because it was built out in a way that simply just isn't possible to machine. And then the users have to go through and do it themselves. Well, here in Creo, we're building it out as a freestyle feature. What that means is we can manufacture it, but we can also go through and tweak the design. And finally, design a part that includes everything that I need and is possible to create in the real world. So to see that, we're gonna jump over and look at what that looks like over in Creo itself. Okay, so now we should see the Polaris snowmobile that I have up on the screen here. And there's a lot of great geometry that we're able to utilize in this design. Specifically, we wanna take a closer look into our swing arm assembly. So let's open that up so we can see what we have going on here. We can see there's a lot of different parts and features that are working together in this design. But overall, I decided there's just too much material being wasted here and it's not quite strong enough. So I need to find a way to optimize the design, but also adhere to my design criteria. To do that, we're gonna utilize the topology optimization extension in Creo. So close out of that whole assembly and simply go in and grab the part that we're gonna be working with here today. Here, I have more of a blocky design for this assembly with some area built out in the middle that we can utilize for our study. And all I have to do is click up at the top. We can find the topology optimization button and dive right in. The first thing we'll notice here is that we have some structural parameters laid out here, things like loads and constraints. We're able to either lay those out at the beginning of the study or just take it some from another study such as a Creo Simulate. We already have them laid out. The next thing that we wanna do after we have all these loads and constraints laid out is we wanna go through and define the type of analysis we wanna run. which could be modal, thermal. In this case, I'll do a structural analysis using those loads and constraints that I already have laid out. After this, we'll wanna define our topology regions. This begins by stating maybe a mass fraction and then defining which areas we want to be excluded from the study. We know that we maybe these bars are holes that we don't want to be altered. We want those to stay the same. Well, I'll tell the system to leave those areas alone. Here, we can next use those fabrication constraints like I discussed earlier. So for my study, I want that to be optimized and mirrored about a certain plane. Once this is complete, I can start to define my design objectives. So we want to optimize the strain energy using the analysis and the loads that we laid out earlier. On top of this, maybe I want to lay out um, some more con different constraints on top of that. In this case, we don't want the mass fraction going above 0.3. Next thing we're doing here is running that through our element mesh for our model. So we could go through and define that by ourselves, but in this case, we'll let the system automatically build that mesh out for us. Once we have all this criteria and different definitions for our study, we're able to jump right into our topology optimization and start to see the effects of that here. So now what's happening is the system is taking all those different things we laid out, design objectives, mass limitations, fabrication constraints, and it's building towards the optimal design that fits everything that we want it to accomplish here. And once it goes through all these different iterations, and then finally it does converge onto a solution, we simply close out of that view, and then we can see the results right over here on the model. So we'll load in these results here. All right, we can very clearly see this model has gone through a lot of different changes. With Creo 6.0, we can animate that and see how we actually got to this point. And if you want, you could actually save that animation off and use it 
in other places like a presentation. And another cool feature that we introduced with Creo 6.0 was the ability to use ISO surfaces. So we can see here the optimized part against the boundary box that's laid out for it, along with maybe some of the stress analysis that we can plot out here on the part as, as well. All right. And we can also look at maybe the deformed view for this model and then compare it alongside a undeformed version to see how it's changed. We also have options to see exactly how exaggerated that is, and we can pick that right up here. Okay. So now that I've had time to re review over some of these uh, topology optimization studies and what we got from that, I need to get into a form that I can actually fabricate. So I have the option to pick exactly how detailed I want this reconstruction to be. So I want that to be pretty detailed, so I can select that. And then we're gonna build out a freestyle feature that I can actually work with. And Creo is the only software that takes you beyond that initial visualization, actually lets us create the part that we've gone through and optimize. So I can go through here, check out my model, clean up any areas that I see fit. I can take any of these faces here, and then we can take these facets that we have laid out and actually go through and refine these and build that out to whatever level I need it to be. So now that we've gone through and refined those facets, we can use our freestyle geometry that we have and reconstruct it to better match it up with that. And again, we have full control over all the resolution for these features and how closely we want these all to be aligned. Here, I can select maybe how, how that resolution comes out, maybe just level two. And then we can see that right on the model, looks great. Now that I've built out my model using topology optimization, maybe I wanna share this design out with other people on my team. Well, this is something that we began building out in Creo 4, and that's the idea of incorporating augmented reality into our designs. Setting this up is very easy. This box that we're putting in is just a spatial target. This essentially acts as the surface that my model is going to sit on and the orientation of how I'll be able to view it. There we go, and we can have this be password protected. And just a few options, maybe after this, we can go through and say, hey, what's the quality I wanna publish this as? And just like that, I can share this design off. So now it's been pushed up into the cloud you can share that off with anyone that I need to. Again, password protected to make sure only the right people are seeing this. And Creo actually streamlined the process of sharing our parts off. So rather than sending off to just individual emails, simply export that out to maybe 15, 20 people, and do that all right from Creo. So now that we've laid out some of our design criteria and gone through and run the topology optimization, maybe even shared off the design with other members of my team, now I'm gonna simulate the part to truly get to that best design. So we'll take in that optimized part that we built out and then we can move into our simulate module. And here now, we can see the same loads and constraints that we had laid out earlier. Well, we can simply utilize these and run a standard static analysis on my model. We take a look at things like stress values, displacement, whatever I happen to be concerned with, and even edit a few options, see how I wanna build out that deformation on my model whenever it comes out. And pulling up these results, we can see where the stress is actually occurring on the model. We have some different values laid out in the legend. And more importantly, I wanna compare these values and stresses with what we're getting here to the original model and see if those changes that I made actually did have an effect through my study. We're simply looking at the max stress that we're getting. We're going from about 607 megapascals down to about 569, which is a pretty significant drop off. And zooming in on the joint here, we can also see that the optimized model does a better job of spreading out that stress rather than having it focused on a very small area like the original part did. So that's topology optimization in Creo. We're creating a complex and robust geometry that we probably couldn't have come up with on our own, but it provides us some very strong and optimized parts. All right, and moving forward with this, there's a lot of different things we can do with that. And to start that off, we have two main packages here with the topology optimization. That really comes down to how much are you doing? In the base package, we I can take a given part and have three analysis, where in the plus package, you can have as many as you want. And types of analysis, so structural, modal, and then you would utilize the plus package to see something like thermal analysis. And finally, fabrication constraints that I mentioned earlier. We have all the most common ones built out in the base package, 
but there's a bunch of other ones that you can utilize in the plus package. So whatever your needs or requirements happen to be, we got you covered. Moving forward, we're really starting to optimize and speed up a lot of the processes that would have taken a lot of time otherwise. Well, I now simply just need to lay out a basic part, define my goals and criteria, and then just have the system build out the best part for me. We can define exactly what we want the optimization to focus on, whether that be minimizing the material that's being used, improving the overall performance of the part, or maybe even both. If I need to go back on later, change any loads or constraints, we simply just tell the system to run through another study. And we can now see exactly how some of that geometry may have changed, maybe what stayed the same. And on top of this, we're really building out our designs that we probably never would have been able to come up with on our own. And it's really a breakthrough in the way that we see design today. And it's changing the way that we even approach our designs going forward. And that's all I really have to go over with uh, topology optimization. I can hand it back over to Cassie now. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Um, I don't see any questions, but um, I do want to mention that right now we do have a buy one, get one 50% off when you keep or yeah, when you commit to a two-year subscription to any Creo package or MathCAD licenses. Um, the offer is only valid through the end of the month, so jump on the offer now before it's too late. Um, I'll also include the link uh, that you need to find more information about the offer in the follow-up email I'll be sending out this afternoon. Um, there's also that short three-question survey that'll pop up uh, once we end the webinar. So. Um, just take a moment to answer those questions. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.